Hello and welcome to the OpenMX video tutorial series. In this video, we will be discussing the concept of a latent variable in preparation for modeling latent variables and confirmatory factor analysis in OpenMX. Latent variables are an interesting concept that present themselves in many fields of study. The idea of latent variable modeling is that we have something we are interested in, but that thing is either very difficult or impossible to directly measure. What we have, though, are indicators of that something we are interested in. An indicator is just something that a latent variable is suspected to influence. In psychology, depression could be considered a latent variable that manifests itself in the measurable indicator variable of crying. In political science, political ideology could manifest itself as the way individuals vote on multiple topics. In the medical sciences, a patient's quality of life could manifest itself in the patient's physical health. These are just a few examples, but the concept of latent variables can be applied to many fields. In order to understand how we can model a variable that we have not directly measured, we can use this path diagram. As you can see, we have four variables, x1, x2, x3, and x4. We have modeled the variances of each of these variables, but we have also modeled the covariances of these variables. Notice that we have modeled six covariance paths, thus modeling all possible relationships between these variables. But maybe there is a way to simplify this model. Maybe we do not need all these paths. That is where latent variable modeling comes in. In latent variable modeling, we assume that the covariances between our variables of interest are all due to the fact that something else is causing the variables to occur and thus any relationship between these variables is simply due to variation of that something else. On the right we have an example of a latent variable model known as a factor analysis. Notice that the covariances between our predictors are gone. Instead an underlying latent variable or factor f is causing the variation in our variables. Disregarding the means paths this model actually uses less parameters to describe the same system, netting us more degrees of freedom. This is the system of equations modeled by this path model. We have a mean for each manifest variable. We also have a path from our latent variable, f, to each of our manifest variables. In latent variable modeling and factor analysis, these values are known as factor loadings. We also have an error variance for each of our manifest variables. This variation is the amount of variation within an individual variable after we have accounted for the common variance between these variables. Finally, we have a variance term for our factor. To allow us to properly estimate this model, this factor is assumed to be normally distributed. Let's look at a concrete example of how factor analysis builds a latent variable from variation within and between manifest variables. Let's replace our manifest variables here with real-world behaviors of individuals. Let's use crying, sleeping, eating, and talking. We know from psychological research that all these things can be symptomatic of depression. Let's take crying for example. Some portion of the variation within individuals crying is due to how depressed they are. I will mark this as blue. However, this is not the only reason people cry. People also cry when they are happy, as well as when they are angry. The same is true for each of these other variables. While some portion of the variation within these variables is due to depression, there are other things that cause variation in these variables. But notice that the only common color that is, the only source of common variation between these variables is when people are depressed. Think of each of these manifest variables giving us a small snapshot of what depression looks like. We can then use those individual pieces to reconstruct what depression looks like given these indicators. Notice that once we do this, the variables now have little to nothing in common. What is left over is considered to be due to error variance or unique variance of each of these variables. Also notice that some variables gave us more information about what our latent variable looked like than others. These variables would then have a stronger standardized loading than the other variables. If our latent variable accounts for enough of the variation both within and between these variables, then we can say that our model fits the data. There are multiple measures of fit, such as RMSEA, CFI, and TLI, 
We will go over these in a later video. Let's model a single factor model using OpenMX. First we load OpenMX with the library function. Then we read in our data and get a summary. Notice that we do not have a variable in our dataset for our latent factor. We will specify that later. Next we define the names of our manifest variables. And what is new in a factor model is the concept of latent variables. We're going to make an object called latents, which is just going to be the name F1. We will then use this latent variable object in OpenMX. Next we follow the steps of building a standard MX model. We give the model a name, one factor model, and it's going to be a RAM type model. We also define the manifest variables. What is new is the latent vars argument. That is identically the latent variables which we specified before. These represent the circles in a path diagram. Next we specify the A matrix. Notice that this matrix is 5 by 5. This includes our four manifest variables and our single latent variable. This change is also reflected in the dim names argument. The rest of the matrix is built as expected, with single headed arrows going from our latent variable, which in this case is the last column of our matrix, to our manifest variables. Next we create our S matrix. This matrix has a very special quality for this specific model. As factor models have more equations than there are variables to solve these equations, we have to fix a quality of the factor model to be 1 in order to solve that model. Here we fix the factor variance to be equal to 1. Next is the filter matrix. Notice that this matrix is 4 by 5. The four rows are for the four manifest variables, and the five columns are for the manifest plus latent variables. When we look at the values of this matrix, we notice that only the part which has manifest variables has ones on the diagonal, not for the latents. Next we have our means matrix. Here we set the mean of the latent factor to be zero, and we fix that parameter. Finally, we throw all this into an expectation function and run our model. In looking at a summary, we can see all the factor loadings of our factor model. In order to assess fit of this model, though, we will have to do something extra. We will discuss fit in the next video. Thanks for watching.